One bourbon, one scotch, and one bill. One bourbon, one scotch. This is the example video for two by two systems or planar systems. Uh, for the first question, we want to solve y prime equals ay for the matrix a equals negative 4, negative 8, 4, and 4. So, first thing we had to do is we had to find what our eigenvalues are. So, we do that by taking the determinant of a minus lambda i and setting that equal to 0. We can just use the equation lambda squared equals, or minus the trace of a lambda plus the determinant of a um, equals the determinant of a minus lambda i to make this easier. The trace of a is just the sum of the diagonal entries, so negative 4 plus 4. And the determinant of a is going to be negative 4 times 4 minus 4 times negative 8. Um, 4 minus 4 will go 0, so we have lambda squared um, plus whatever this is. This is going to be negative 16 plus 32. It's all equals 0. So we get lambda squared plus 16 equals 0. This gives us the eigenvalues um, lambda equals 4i and lambda equals negative 4i. So this lambda is just a complex conjugate of our first lambda. So we just need to consider this lambda, and we'll get a fundamental solution, or two solutions out of that. So this is going to have a complex eigenvector, w, which is going to be a minus lambda i, or which is defined by a minus lambda i w equals 0. So we can define w to have components a and b, which we're going to find. Um, a minus lambda i is a minus 4i i. And that's going to be um, negative 4 minus 4i, negative 8, and 4, and then 4 minus 4i. And w is ab. So we can um, turn this into an augmented matrix. And we can swap the first and second row. We get 4 and 4 minus 4i. Negative 4 minus 4i and negative 8. And for all these complex um, um, systems of equations, a um, little trick is you just need to look at the relationship between the um, two values on the top row. So first, let's do a little simplification. R1 divided by 4, which will give us 1, and 1 minus i. Yeah, so we don't even need to look at the bottom row. We just need to look at this top row, which tells us, um, when we'll multiply by a, b, that 1 times a plus 1 minus i times b will equal 0. This tells us that a equals negative 1 plus i times b, and we know b equals b, so that means the vector ab equals negative 1 uh, plus i and 1 times b. We can define b to be 1, which gives us that w equals negative 1 plus i 1. Um, so we know our sl complex solution, z of t, is going to equal e to the lambda t w. e to the lambda t is just e to the 4 i t, and w is going to be negative 1 plus i 1. So we want to decompose this into its real and imaginary parts. First, we're going to take this exponential and use Euler's formula to convert it to cosine. 4t plus i sine 4t. And then we're going to split up this vector here into negative 1, 1, plus i, 0. And uh, we can write i, 0 actually as 
i times 1, 0. So now we just multiply this out. We multiply this cosine 4t by the first vector. So you get cosine 4t times negative 1, 1. Multiply the um, cosine 4t by the second vector to get i cosine 4t, 1, 0. Then we multiply si i sine 4t by the first vector. Then we multiply i sine 4t by the second vector to get i squared, which is negative 1, times sine 4t, 1, 0. And then we group the real parts together. So that's going to be this and that. So cosine 4t, negative 1, 1, minus sine 4t, 1, 0, um, plus i times cosine 4t, 1, 0, plus sine 4t, negative 1, 1. So this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part, the complex solution. So these are going to be our um, two fundamental solutions. So we have y1 equaling, um, we can distribute this out to negative cosine 4t uh, minus sine 4t. So that's the first top component. And then we can distribute the bottom component to get cosine 4t plus 0 on the bottom. And then y2 is going to be cosine 4 t minus sine 4t on top, and then sine 4t on the bottom. And now we can write our complete solution. y of t equals c1 times y1. And c2 times y2.